All right, we're going to continue this presentation on this role of biblical chronology and prophecy. In the last segment, we didn't quite get focused on the thing that I was actually talking about, so we can focus on it again here, up here. Um, the month of Adar 2, 2012. Okay, so just get a big shot of that. And then get the corresponding Gregorian calendar down here. And now we can drop down to Adar 2. Uh, that was Adar 1, sorry. Adar 2. Okay, the fast of Esther here, Purim, Purim Shushan. And the corresponding Gregorian dates for that would be here um, March 7th, March 8th and March 9th. All right. Okay, so now let's come down back down here to the scroll here. And we were talking about um, Cyrus Longimanus, or Artaxerxes I, and his rule began in, uh, let's see here, 465, 465 BC, in this column here. And the reason that we know that, know that his rule began then is because he died before, Xerxes was murdered before Tishri 1 in 465. And so the first year of um, our Xerxes by Jewish reckoning would be from Tishri 465 to Tishri 464. Let's see here. Right there. You can line that up. There's the first year. There's two pointers here. First year of our Xerxes, okay, and this ends in Tishri of 464, which also happens to be the year of Jubilee. So the first year of Cyrus our Xerxes is the year of Jubilee, all right, and that makes a convenient point to actually count the Jubilee period from. All right, so now we come down to some significant dates. All right, we're going to skip over his seventh year because um, Ezra came in the seventh year of the second Artaxerxes, which is not this Artaxerxes. Okay, the twentieth year of Artaxerxes is right here. The chart has been blown up quite a bit. Okay, this is when Nehemiah got his decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Okay, and the twentieth year begins in. 445 BC, and the 20th year comes to an end in 444 BC. All right, and then the records in the book of Nehemiah the year, the 20th year, and it also tells us the walls were finished in the month of Elul, and then it tells us um, in Nehemiah 7 and 8 that the Torah was read. And this turns out to be a sabbatical year, hence this expanded year, shaded red here. Okay. First, and they read the Torah here in the month of Tishri, on Tishri 1 and Tishri 2, and they read it from Tishri 15 to Tishri um, 22, to the last great day. Then this will be the first sabbatical period of Daniel 9 here. All right. And realizing that this King Artaxerxes is also called by Josephus Cyrus. So this Artaxerxes is the one that issued the decree to rebuild the city. And then the other Cyrus, called Cambyses, is the one who issued the decree to rebuild the temple, according to the prophecy of Isaiah. The fulfillment is spread up, split up between two Persian kings that have the throne name Cyrus. Okay, then we have seven sevens or seven sabbatical periods. Okay, 49 years lead us down to the completion of Ezra's reforms. Okay, now after Artaxerxes, we have another minor Persian monarch here, Darius II, Nathus. Okay, so that's the title that secular history gives us. But he would also be a, a Cyrus. And Artaxerxes II, Menemon, would also be a Cyrus. Okay? And when Ezra talks about um, the seventh year of Artaxerxes, he's talking about 
um, second Artaxerxes, okay? And this is exactly 49 years after the decree to rebuild the city. That's this column here. Or seven sevens, a period containing seven sabbatical periods. So here's the seventh sabbatical year, sixth, seventh. And then here's the eighth. Actually, there isn't an eighth because it starts recounting again. 62 sabbatical periods, according to Daniel 9. So Ezra completes his reforms here. And we know that Ezra comes after Nehemiah because of the high priestly succession and the fact that the Kohen Haggadol was Yahunatan or Jonathan, mentioned in the book of Ezra. Uh, he went into the chamber of Jonathan, the son of Eliasha. And so Jonathan was the one who had the office in the temple um, at the time of Ezra. And Eliasha was his, was his grandfather. And that is back, Eliashib is the Kohen Haggadol that's contemporary with the work of Nehemiah. Now Ezra, as a young man and scholar, did read the Torah for Nehemiah, but his administration comes second. Nehemiah's administration was first, Ezra's was second. And if you read the book of Ezra, you will see that Ezra covers a wide expanse of history, and actually only one year is covered concerning Ezra himself at the end of the book. All right, and we go forward in the scroll here. We have Artaxerxes III, Ochus. We have Darius Codomanus, okay. And this is the last um, Persian monarch. And Persia was defeated by Alexander the Great, um, the Greek, okay. Greek from Macedonia, and so this is the reign of Alexander the Great. Okay, like I said in a, in a past presentation, uh, dates in Greek chronology can be a, uncertain to plus or minus one year, although we can be certain of a few things, such as when the Battle of Gaza that began the Seleucid era was began. But in this column, there are four different ways of, of reckoning the era of what's called the era of contracts, or the Seleucid era. Okay, so we'll skip over most of the Greek chronology here, scroll regimen, and we'll come down to Antiochus IV. Okay, this is the this is the background for the um, for the feast of Hanukkah which is a traditional feast that celebrates Judas Maccabee's rededication of the temple um, at the end of the rule of, of Antiochus IV, who defiled the temple. So this gives this chronology here and uh, certain dates from the book of Maccabees here are put into, this, into the chronology. Okay, and we're still over here in this column, we're still counting off uh, after the seven sevens of Ezra, and then we're counting 62 sevens, okay, until Mashiach Nagib, or um, Messiah the Prince, okay, will be cut off. So this is the 34th sabbatical year of the, of the 62 sevens that are mentioned in, in the book of Daniel. And according to Jewish interpretation, the sevens in the book of Daniel are, um, are indeed sabbatical periods. Um, the Stone Edition, for instance, translates Daniel 9 as 70 sept septets, which is, to use a Latin word, is, means really 70 sevenths, or 70 seventh years. In Deuteronomy, um, the phrase, this Shemitah year, or the release year, is called the year of the seven. So the word seven is actually used to indicate the seventh year kind of like we say seventh day to indicate the Sabbath day. So seven sevens are seven sabbatical years, and 62 sevens are 62 sabbatical years. And then after the 62 sabbatical years, um, or after the 60 and two sevens, um, the Messiah will be cut off, according to the prophecy. All right, so here at the time of Antiochus, we're on the 34th of the 62 sevens, counting after the seven sevens, or the 62 sevens come consecutively after this, 
the seven sevens. Okay. And we're working forward in the chronology here. We have the was the Hasmonean kings. Okay, the 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 priestly family that appointed themselves in the throne. They weren't supposed to do that. They should have got the king from the house of David. All right. We come down to the last of the Hasmonean kings, Antigonus, and he's put to death by Herod, and Herod takes over in, well, actually Herod got the throne, legal title to the throne from the Romans in 40 BC, over here, and then after fighting for three years, he actually obtained the control of Judea in, let's line this up here, 38, okay, late, late 38 BC. Now, some people think it's 37, but actually, according to the Roman historian Dio Cassius, Sosius conquered Jerusalem in, in late 38. And we see this is a sabbatical year, alluded to by Josephus. All right, battle between Mark Antony and Augustus Caesar, September 2, 31 BC. Okay, this is the famous battle that brought Egypt under the Roman Empire and really begins what we call the Empire. Roman, Rome is a republic before this and then Caesar gets absolute power, consolidates absolute power and we end up with the, with the Empire here. Okay. In 19 BC or no? Well, Herod proposes a new inner temple. The preparation materials took one and a half to two years because Herod wouldn't tear down the old temple until everything was ready. The inner temple was completed. And this is the era, years for the completion of the temple here, the screen column. And uh, we learn from the book of John when Yeshua began his ministry. Right here, forty and six years he hath built his temple, and you will raise it up in three days. A reference, typological reference to the resurrection of the dead. And that corresponds to the spring of AD 30. Now I want to back up to the birth of Yeshua. Okay. We have the birth of Yeshua here in 2 BC. Okay. Line this up right below the staff. Nine September one two BC. Okay, and this is where uh, the sign in heaven occurred of the the woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. All right, and we come down here to thirtieth uh, year of Yeshua. Right here which was right at the end of the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. Okay. And he was Yeshua beginning about 30 years old, which is to say he was almost 30 years old um, when Yeshua began his ministry. So here's his 29th year here. Okay. And then here's toward the end of his 29th year when he's about to be 30. Typical period for priests to be immersed and enter into their ministry. So Yeshua is following this pattern or this custom. And this is the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. Now this is a very important date because um, as I said before, the scripture doesn't use secular chronological dates unless we can be certain about them. And according to the Roman sources and the Roman histories, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar began in AD 28 and ended in AD 29. Now the church later corrupted this and tries to slide it back to revise the chronology, but there's no evidence, no trace of this in Roman history, Roman records at all. It's always AD 28 to AD 29. Okay, we go back to, okay, so Figuring that, and this is a benchmark year, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, Yeshua is almost 30, okay, so the 30th year would be from Tishri after that, 
this 29th year from T Street before. And then if we back up, we find that his birth was in the fall of 2 BC. So here's 2 BC. Okay, and this is also confirmed by the fact that researchers have now determined that Herod died in 1 BC and not 4 BC as previously thought. Um, an error of printed copies of Josephus has resulted in a correction for the reign of Herod Philip, which here starts in 1 BC and not as previously thought in 4 BC. Um, David Byer found that evidence. Uh, then we have, I have the reigns of the other Herods here. Herod Archelaus, okay, up to his 10th year when he's banished. Okay, now let's come up to Yeshua's ministry here. We have the reference to the 46th year of the temple being built, which brings us to at least 30 AD. Um, in addition, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar in the fall would mean that the first Passover in John of Yeshua's ministry was in the 30th, 30th, 30, BC, 30 AD. Okay. Um, now I want to make a comment about AD BC. Okay. In world chronology, we go directly from 1 BC to 1 AD. Okay. And it's often thought that a Catholic monk made a mistake, but actually this mistake is not as large as people might think it be, would be. Is because if you look here, Yeshua is age one after a full 12 months. And if you see that his first year, actually three quarters of Yeshua's first year corresponds to AD 1. Okay, and you get to after... Um, when the, when the year turns over in January, the Roman year turns over, then it corresponds until the next fall. So now we're in the year 2012 right now, and since it's after January, between January and Tishri, then Yeshua is 2012 years old, which actually corresponds. We'll continue this in the next segment.